face to face, and today we're going to talk about nuclear weapons. We're going to talk about the treaty to ban nuclear weapons. I'm with Seth, with ICANN. Thank you very much for coming to face to face. Yeah. Uh, so before we start to talk about New York, where we have an uh, interesting situation and a lot of news, maybe we can do a global uh, overview of what is a treaty and then the international situation uh, briefly. Mm, sure, sure. Uh, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, this is uh, what ICANN works to advance, uh -huh. is the first comprehensive uh, and categorical prohibition treaty when it comes to nuclear weapons that was adopted in July of 2017. And now, just a bit over two years into it, we are working toward the entry into force of the treaty. Exactly. So it's yeah. to ban, to produce, to sell, to, yep. to research. To use, to threaten to use, to stockpile, to develop, to test. Anything that is along the life cycle of a nuclear weapon is prohibited under the treaty, uh, as well as encouragement or assistance with uh, anyone engaging in the prohibited activities. And the idea was to make nuclear weapons to be the same category than landmine or than uh, chemical weapons. Biological and... weapons, cluster munitions, yes. And it's in, indeed, it's the first uh, categorical treaty-based ban on nuclear weapons that will bring them in line with all other weapons of mass destruction. And so, to give an example, like even the, the U.S. didn't sign the landmine treaty, but they don't produce landmine. Right. So that's what, that's the objective with the, with the, with the treaty. Yes. It's even the people who are not signing the treaty necessarily will have difficulties and hard time to be to be able to keep producing them and, and selling the, the the nuclear weapons and so on and so forth. Right, and and I can and those who are advancing this treaty very much stand on the shoulders of those who brought uh, that 1997 landmine treaty. Uh, uh, together and did it despite the opposition of possessor states, yeah. uh, just like you say, and uh, with the recognition and the strategy that you know these possessor states aren't going to lead the way to disarming themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it will require building a new norm, and uh, and over time they will come too. Uh, obviously, nuclear weapons are not the same as these other weapons, but it's uh, a strategy that. Uh, is, is somewhat being duplicated here, where, uh, as with landmines, we saw that, as you say, the U.S., uh, which objected strongly to the treaty, nonetheless um, saw so that it produce, wasn't yeah. they ceased to produce it. And, yeah. and, it, and it's, you know, a, a lot of it relates to the money, mm -hmm. a lot of it relates to uh, yeah. divestment campaigns. Once, once other produce. countries, it's illegal, you know, let's say for a, a Swiss company to invest in a company that produces nuclear weapons in the U.S., even that U.S. company will then be uh, hindered, and so you see with these with these treaties, it's not only about making these weapons illegal; it's also about making them irrelevant. commercially impossible. Yeah, commercially impossible to treat, to sell, to so don't you don't make any money at the end of the day. Yeah, or yeah, there's no they're disincentivized. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And these things are possible, but <laughs> and so the ground to do it was humanitarian ground. So yeah. it was the consequences of yes. Uh, the, the humanitarian disarmament uh, movement is about reframing discussions around weaponry to those that were framed by uh, state-based interests to ones that are based in uh, human interests. And, and so it, it's, this humanitarian shift is what led uh, um, the, man, the, the mind ban treaty to succeed, and it's similarly what's being pursued here with nuclear weapons. And so it will be to, to push the idea that the consequences will be so devastating Correct, yeah, for yeah. Uh, the population affected by uh, nuclear weapon, then it has to be banned because not yeah. too much of the nuclear weapon itself, but because of the consequences affecting the population and people who have nothing to do with the situation. Exactly, even in the, your own your own population, for that matter. I mean, yes, that is what the humanitarian disarmament movement is about, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons, is recognizing that there can be, uh, in the event of a use, whether on purpose or accidental, there will be humanitarian consequences of such catastrophic uh, proportions that humanity will not have any adequate means of responding and it will affect uh, everyone. And, and I think 
uh, even this past year, we've had developments in the science around uh, the climate-related science around the use of nuclear weapons that demonstrates that uh, when it comes to even a use, uh, uh, what you might call a limited use of nuclear weapons, and a lot of studies examine the use of approximately 100 um, weapons used in a potential catastrophe in, in, uh, in, in India, Pakistan, and demonstrating that uh, even that use would cause so much climate disruption uh, by virtue of the fact that it would uh, create so much debris and precipitate matter to loft above into the upper atmosphere, above the reach of precipitation, that it would then result in what we now call nuclear winter, uh, but where there's, um, there's, there's rain doesn't fall, uh, crops are destroyed, and, uh, famine. and famine yeah. and political disruption is, is inevitable. I mean, at and the small level, where uh, with the, the fire in Australia, where now the smoke is doing the, the war too, we can imagine uh, a nuclear in disruption of nuclear weapons. A lot of the modeling relates to uh, volcanic-related fires yeah. and explosions. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's how we we know. Um, it's it's uh, I think key to the modeling for nuclear weapons is that uh, the the nature of the, that use actually lofts the debris so high into the atmosphere. So right now, to give a, a, an overview of where the treaties stand. Uh, it was one tour to be able to introduce the treaty to the UN, mm. with 80 countries who signed on, more or less. Now, at this, how many countries have signed as no, at no, this point? No, no, at the first oh, run was, uh, oh, has, uh, uh, no, it was 202, no, country? Uh, 122 countries voted to adopt exactly. in July 2017. Okay, you know? and that's and when I can got, got the Nobel Peace Prize, more or less. I can was uh, a, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in uh, December 2017 for both bringing its atten bringing attention to the humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons and for advancing the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons so yeah. yes yeah and then from there in in the the treaty has been some way introduced and now it need to be ratified correct it okay. opened for signature in September 2017 okay and uh, I can advance to now, uh, you know, a little bit over two years later. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 80 states have signed. Uh, oh, wow. 34 have ratified. Uh, so it, it was passed by their own Congress, each country. Ratification is, is different is, in each country, yeah. but in many but countries it's a, it's, it's a legislative process. Exactly. Yes. But in a lot of countries um, where the nuclear weapons are already prohibited, uh, by virtue of them be belonging, let's say, to a, a regional nuclear weapon free zone, yeah, like, no, no like new national law. Like South America. Be, exactly. Uh, uh, the, and, 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 well, most of uh, south, the Southern Hemisphere belongs to nuclear weapon free zone treaties. Uh, and, Africa? Yeah, the Palindaba Treaty yeah. in Africa. Uh, and, and for a lot of those countries, they already have national laws uh, that make it illegal to do pretty much everything that's prohibited under the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. So, so it's not complicated so for them they don't need to as a legal much. matter. Yeah. 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 And, um, uh, but yes, it's still in most countries, some sort of parliamentary process is often required. This takes time. You know, in yeah. the U.S., it can take literally forever, yeah. as we've seen with some treaties, and um, and uh, signatures a lot uh, is is an ex often an executive uh, initiative. So it will take time for each country to move, but we've seen many countries declare that they are moving uh, publicly, even, and we have um, we know that there are. Uh, even more than the 122 adopters, we believe at least 135 states and possibly up to like 140 something states that are supporters of the treaty and um, intend to 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 support it and intend to sign and ratify. Um, and so um, that's the vast majority of the world's countries, uh, minus the nuclear armed states and uh, the. So yeah, so this is where the problem a little bit is. It's mm -hmm. the the. the 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 people who have nuclear weapons who are not so many, but they are the most powerful country in the world. So it's China, it's 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 in Europe, it's uh, four or five countries, and then the U.S. and then and then Israel and then Pakistan and India and then 
and then the, the security council with uh, of the of the united nation are the same more or less people who have the nuclear weapon so he get does 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 the smaller country or the country where we don't have nuclear weapon are bullied by uh, by the big big guy or yeah we, we have it, definitely it, seen examples of of this kind of influence yeah. exerted almost in a colonial fashion where yeah. uh, countries exert uh, their 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 wishes on on uh, on on their former or spheres of, of influence uh, in in ways that are you know I think call into question respect for sovereignty and um, and and all kinds of uh, I think bad behavior mm -hmm. but uh, yes we have seen pressure uh, examples of pressure and yet we have also seen states say that they're moving forward anyway and you know time and again they do so and, and, we, and the and treaty is advancing yeah. I mean I think that we all know at this point uh, that the treaty will enter into force it's just a matter of how fast it's going to happen and that's that states it, will continue a given, to. it's a given that the treaty in will my be, mind it's a given yeah. I think most most people will agree even the that people who be, oppose the treaty that would be unbelievable you know, it's, it's it's I think I think it's inevitable and we certainly believe that it will happen in, in the coming months uh, that we're we're making a lot of strong progress and uh, that that with all the states that are in the pike that it, yeah it will happen if it's a country in, in Belgium want to to sign the treaty yeah. how complicated for them to be able to do it with uh, with being part of uh, of OTAN and and how are they going to do it yeah well I mean we see that with a lot of NATO states that yeah. they um, th they obviously are standing together at the moment in terms of uh, not wanting to sign and ratify the treaty but um, you know especially in democratic countries this is changing and we see it changing and in Belgium to your example just last week, we saw. A, oh yeah, a, oh, no, it was really. It was a random, random yeah, yeah, random exactly, example. yeah, yeah. Yeah, where it was a a a, a, um, a vote was taken in Parliament whether to sign the treaty, and it was narrowly lost after uh, a lot of uh, pressure was brought to bear from the U.S. not to not to support it again to the you know to the parliamentarians there. So that could be break. In some way, it's absolutely possible that one country from NATO say we're going to sign it and then and that will be opening a, a big space for other country to do it yeah definitely yeah. Uh, or maybe we can talk about the cities who have supporting the treaty and some city have signed oh, okay. on the treaty and then maybe specifically right. uh, well a city can't of course sign the treaty it's a it's a federal initiative yeah. um, for each country to uh, to sign or not sign and to ratify or not ratify. However, uh, ICANN has uh, has created an initiative called the ICANN Cities Appeal, directed at cities and states in nuclear armed countries and in uh, umbrella or extended deterrence countries like NATO, uh, where those cities will uh, sign a declaration saying that the citizens of this city support the treaty yep. and are calling for their yeah, federal government to sign and ratify. And it does a number of things. It, it certainly combats the uh, narrative or the argument from uh, the possessor states that these 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 weapons are desirable to their citizens, and um, and that uh, that 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 they're protecting their citizens when when their citizens stand up and mm -hmm. say that they oppose them, mm -hmm. and that they support the treaty. Mm -hmm. So we've had hundreds of cities uh, joining this city's appeal the campaign. and mm -hmm. um, and in the US we've had a, a good number of cities including Washington DC wow. and Los Angeles uh, and uh, New York uh, where we are right now uh, we believe is coming very soon mm -hmm. uh, and in fact this is timely in the sense that uh, we have a hearing on Tuesday next Tuesday from today anyway so uh, January 28th at 1 p.m. at City Hall, uh, the New York City Council will have a hearing for the two bills uh, that do number do a number of things yeah. in addition to, to the city mm -hmm. to the city's appeal. One yeah. of the things it does is uh, declare New York support for the city's appeal for ICANN and for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, yeah. calling on the U.S. federal government to sign and ratify. Yeah. But it also does uh, a number of other things. It reaffirms New York's New York City's nuclear weapon-free zone status. Mm -hmm. um, well, many people don't know this, but 
Uh, New York City used to host nuclear weapons. Uh, there was a ring of nuclear weapon uh, bases that surrounded the city. Oh, yeah? That, of course, increased the risk that New York City know, would know, suffer uh -huh. from a catastrophic incident, whether by design or by accident. Yeah. Uh, and uh, New York, which has a legacy, of course, with nuclear weapons, it was called the Manhattan Project for a region. For the for reason, reason. Yeah. It, it did originate here. Yeah. And, uh, and but since that time, New York has has really stood up and been one of uh, the progressive leaders on this issue. Um, many people will recall the, for instance, the 1982 Central Park protest, which was one of people. the largest yeah. protests in the history of the United States. Yeah. Uh, and that was all coming at a time that people were mo mobilizing for the nuclear freeze movement. Mm -hmm. And New York was, was a very powerful actor in that, in that moment. Yeah. And, and the city council passed these nuclear weapon free zones or these, these resolutions to declare New York City a nuclear weapon free zone. And David Dinkins and all, all these you know, actors from back then uh, were able to uh, succeed in, in creating that. And whatever its legal uh, authority was, which can be debated, we know that the federal government stopped bringing nuclear weapons, including during fleet weeks, into New York City since then. Now, this is an appropriate time to redeclare New York City, we think, uh, given increased tensions in the world and plans from the federal government. It does a couple other things, too. It, it calls for Disvest, divestment, divestment. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. which would be a big deal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that uh, New York City, uh, in its pension funds alone, public pension funds alone, we think, have uh, has uh, invested uh, around $475 million of public, public pension fund money into producers and manufacturers of nuclear weapons. And it would call on the controller to divest that money, which is uh, really feasible. I mean, it's it's you know New York City is right now grappling with fossil fuel and you investment. have institutions who start to move in that direction. Also, yeah. financial institutions who try to to move in that direction. So it's not yeah. it, it's it's becoming very doable and without you know yeah. driving a I mean, really crazy. Yeah. A lot of uh, private funds have controversial weapons policies, uh, and one of the challenges has been that. The nuclear weapons have not, you know, investing in production companies in nuclear weapons has not been illegal in the same way it has been in a lot of countries. There isn't a treaty for a lot of states to point to, and now there is one. Mm -hmm. Anticipating the entry into force of this treaty is going is very helpful for mm -hmm. us to make that mm -hmm. argument. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, divestment is a very powerful tool, of course, and and for New York to pull out that kind of money, uh, or even state its intention to do that is is I think very meaningful. Yeah. Um, and, and it does, uh, these bills do other things too. They, they actually create a, a committee to, uh, to, to, to talk about policy and to recommend policy and to provide educational programs uh, about New York City's nuclear weapon free zone status. Oh, yeah? They're very progressive and um, they will be very, very exciting when they pass but not only for so they need to develop to programs into school about nuclear weapons well I, I i don't think it's it's not sketched far. out in various but it's a very exactly. general language okay. in the law and that would have to yet be, to be determined to be determined how, how it would look it. but yeah. yeah it's um there's a lot of potential uh -huh. for sure and 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 of course in addition it it has new york city join uh, the the city's appeal so uh and linking it up with all these other um cities around the world that have done so already great so Tuesday, 1 p.m., that's the hearing. We don't know when the vote would be yet. Yeah, so we have no um, idea when the vote's going to be. I don't think anyone has, has, can say yet when okay. it's scheduled. But, yeah. but uh, how many people signed the resolution? I mean, we, do we know roughly the, the, the number of council members who are Yeah, uh, but there are two different bills. Yeah. But there's, I think, 34 and 35 council members okay. uh, for, you know, for each of them and that have already co-sponsored. Uh -huh. The bills were injured. The lead sponsor is Danny Drum yeah. and, uh, of, of Queens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we already have a super majority of, of council members signed on. So it looks very good yeah. for barring yeah, I think some it's, kind it's of... Yeah, I think it's 37 for the... the, the, the well, it's, it's for the, even, even if the mayor doesn't want to well, veto... That's what we mean by supermajority. 34 is 30, the number. 30, 34, okay. So we have it. So the veto... We waited, uh, we waited for that many okay, co-sponsors, okay. and then we set I mean, I would be surprised if, if the mayor <laughs> yeah. go against it, but, you know... No, uh, no I, I, I think it's unlikely. Yeah, unlikely, but, sure. But, you know, he does have a role in, in the... Or, you know, I don't know that... It, well, at the moment, de Blasio has a role in in the in because the the committee is under the mayor's office. So, uh, and and he the mayor's office gets to appoint 
I think, three members of the committee under uh, the bills as, as drafted of a six-member committee. But he, he never took position? He, he, he never said he's going to be in favor or, or opposite to the, to the resolution? I'm sorry? You yes. think it's going to be opposed to the resolution? I don't. Opposed? No, 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 no I don't. I, don't. I, don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I have no reason to believe that. Yeah, yeah, no. He never mentioned the, it anywhere, no? Then he was... Yeah, uh, no. I have, I have, we have not, okay. we have not gotten no, no, his, no, his no, position not, on yeah, record, but yeah, it would be, it would okay. be very surprising, especially yeah. since it would be ineffective. I mean, was, at the moment, if we have this many, the co-sponsors vote for it, my understanding is that the veto would be, you know, not, would not over, overrule the, the passage. Yeah, so but if you play, if you, yeah, yeah, if you play politically, you can, sure. you know, maybe get one or two, I mean, People are supporting until somebody else is not supporting it. Oh, and yeah. Then, you and mean, then, oh, I see what you mean. Yes. No, no. It, the, the, I agree that, that it's possible that we don't have that many votes, as many as we have co-sponsors. That's possible. But we should all, you know, all New Yorkers and anyone, you don't have to even be a New Yorker, anyone could write into the to the hearings. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, no, it's open. If, even yeah. if, anyone can show up at the hearings and anyone and could submit. Even maybe, I mean, I can, in some of them you can even speak. Yes, you, this one you can speak. You, you know, sign up the at spot, the beginning of the hearing the with a little slip. It, yeah, and then you can you put your... Um, we have a number your, of, of speakers lined up already, but people are still coming and people should still come. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. This is why we want to talk about it. Because no, it's, so, it's being, yeah. and, and I think it's, it's a good call to make because I think it's... A, it's I know it's, it's a complicated issue and I know in daily life of people, we are not waking... We don't wake up with problem with nuclear weapon in the morning, and that really make it a little bit so intangible. But the repercussions and 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 the the the, the development and and the, the pressure. I mean, like like right now between the U.S. and Russia, and then North Korea, and then you have a lot of discussion at the international level who are about nuclear weapons, yeah. and then. Uh, and we are playing this game for too long to not open the door to an accident, to an, a mistake, to an error made. And, and we will have consequences, but beyond anything we can even imagine. So, yeah, well, so, you know, there's a lot of overlap when you say this with the climate crisis, right? Yeah. We all wake up in the morning in the U.S. and we turn on the faucets and everything seems fine. It's hard to imagine sometimes that there's a looming crisis of existential proportions that, 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 may, that may affect us. And I think one of the challenges that we have here is, is, is always is, is helping people understand uh, yep. why it's, the risks are actually exactly. increasing. And you know, on this coming Thursday, we're going to have the new doomsday clock released, right? The, the and they, are the like, they, were not, they are not even at five minutes anymore. They are like two minutes. Where two right minutes now. is it, as close it, to their midnight, yeah. their, their nuclear yeah. catastrophe, yeah. Armageddon, yeah, yeah. That, that they have ever been. They were only there once before in 1953, right after we released, you know, developed the first thermonuclear weapons, which yeah. of course now dwarf the power, the explosive power of what we dropped in, in, in Japan by potentially by up to th over 3,000 times. Wow. They make those weapons seem like so, colonial muskets by so comparison. That's, so that's what and, I was getting yeah. into. It's like keeping the, the research, the development, and, and, and be able to, to, to leave that open, make it then one day you're going to have a nuclear weapon in, in, in a cellular phone. I mean, it, it, it's, it's making it so accessible in some ways for uh, anyone in some way to be able to, to have it, then it's going to be very, very risky business. I mean, and that's where it's happening in, 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 in some ways uh, by co continuing to, to do research and to invest in, 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 in nuclear weapons. So yeah. really... Uh, in the U.S. right now, the, the plan with the nuclear posture review is to invest somewhere between 1.2 and over $2 trillion in the next, in the next 30 years, yeah. next 29 years yeah, at 20, this point, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in developing, including in developing new nuclear weapons and usable nuclear weapons. And Obama and, was a big part of, yeah, of no, that story. No, we so don't, We don't excuse him yeah, for, for, yeah, for... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, means, yeah. And so now Russia is playing the game, and then North Korea is playing another game, and then you have Pakistan who's playing another game, and then you have India who's playing... And, I mean, and it's... It, it's it's getting very very complicated situation uh, because of the technology, because of the geopolitical connection to it, and and so 
And, and who's going to be affected? I mean, I can understand a city like New York say, we don't want to be part of that because it's 10 million people. If anything happened to New York, it's 10 million people who cannot drink, who cannot work, who cannot food, who cannot who have no transportation, you have no subway, you have, no, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's get, I mean, you have a, a pipe who broke in Upper West Side and you get, you get, uh, you get thousands of people stuck who cannot go to work, who, who have to wait, who cannot. I mean, I'm not imagine anything stopping the process. So these are two existential threats, both of humanity's own making, both within humanity's power to ameliorate, uh, but both require urgent action. And both are uh, part of a mutually reinforcing cycle. That is that, you know, uh, well, we can start anywhere on the cycle, but climate change leads to uh, resource insecurity, which which leads to political crisis, which leads to uh, increased risk of conflict, which leads to increased risk of use of whatever weapons you have. Uh, and, uh, oh, you, and the whole immigration to, issue now is becoming too crisis. The refugee crisis is becoming a non, non yeah. climate change issue, it, right. and, and it, it's uh, it's very very clear for many places. And and I don't think I mean we are not. That's not going to get better until we do really something about it. I mean, yeah. it is, is no magic here. It, uh, so. I agree. You wanted to talk about something about Paris. What's happening in Paris? I mean, Paris already pledged. Um, oh, Paris has joined the I Can Cities appeal. Yeah. France, of course, yeah. is opposed to the treaty. Of course. But, uh, at the moment. For no but, reason, but many because, of this... because it's nothing they can do about it. I mean, it, besides owning nuclear weapons, but who's going to attack them? I mean, it, it's really uh, an old, uh, useless situation because it was made before Europe, it was made before, I mean, it's... it's um, well, I, we argue that nuclear weapons are useless for everyone. Uh, they won't actually keep yeah. anyone safe. They're not usable in, the, in, a, in any kind of military strategic scenario in a way that wouldn't cause harm uh, in a absolutely unacceptable and uh, an indiscriminate way to civilians. They're not weapons uh, that are used for for military battle. They're used to kill civilians. And um, yeah, there, there's no they, they, there's no reason that anyone should yeah. have them. But um, yeah, they they um, but the citizens uh, largely, I think, are very much there are many citizens who would would stand up and oppose nuclear weapons there. But the uh, the Paris, yes, has joined the city's appeal that we were talking about that New York is working on. But that's not what um But what ICANN mentioned. is organizing. Yeah, there's a civil society forum okay. that will be on February 14th and February 15th mm -hmm. of this year, I believe, um, and uh, in Paris. Uh, and it's directed at everyone, really, but young people, students, activists who are looking to get involved and are curious about uh, nuclear weapons and uh, want to ban the bomb and um, it should be there's a lot of uh, amazing people who are coming to uh, present and there will be some great workshops and uh, it's very exciting I think and it's anything you want to plug then people should know before we wrap up well uh, I think anyone who's uh, interested about the treaty should uh, go to ICANN's website and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah we're gonna put uh, okay and, uh, and and read and read about ICANN, but really read about the treaty and this process of uh, the humanitarian uh, shift that led to uh, a, a wholly new way to think about uh, the security and and and, uh, and and conflict. And it's um, for me, it's been this ongoing education that's I've learned so much from yeah. uh, people, you know, f like from Wilp. I know you've yeah. had like Ray Atchison on here, yeah. but uh, and. Um, well, many people in this in this movement who have uh, have have shown me that what patriarchal uh, structures do and and the way that we can we can push back against them. Yeah. So I encourage everyone to have that same experience. No, and it's a very interesting focus to look at the at the humanitarian situation of when something like this happened. I mean, it's it's a very powerful to see uh, every. Uh, uh, every situation and, and the people who are working on 
the nurses, I mean, the, 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 the doctor, you don't, if you, you kill your doctor, you kill your nurses, so it's nothing you can do to, to even help the population who has been affected. I mean, it, That's it's why really one of the leading voices in this process has not just been the survivors, the hibachi yeah. from Japan, but also so the, the, the doctors yeah. and the, the Red Cross yeah. that was in Japan yeah. in Hiroshima. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, if I'm to plug something, this isn't an ICANN um, uh, in, initiative exactly, but it's uh, uh, but a, lo a lot of our it's a very powerful video. I think has animated video just just released a short while ago from oh, Kurzgesagt uh, about what happens if a nuclear weapon explodes in your city and the ICRC, the International yeah, Committee. Yeah, I think Red I saw Cross. a couple of, of, of links yeah. in, in Facebook and stuff like it's that. It's very yeah. powerful. It's very yeah. powerful. So yeah. maybe people would be interested in watching that yeah. if there's a link for that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Seth, for, for coming. Uh, that was your show Face to Face, and please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And uh, please subscribe, uh, uh, send the information to your friend and family, and hope to see you very soon. Thank you.